First Covenant Foundation is proud to present The Rainbow Covenant with Dr. Michael Dallin. We'll explore the Noahide movement and its connection to Israel and the Jewish people. For information online, rainbowcovenant.org, firstcovenant.com, or call 1-313-891-1920. Okay, we're just waiting for Michael Dallin to call us, but we do have our other guest on the line. I just want to mention uh, the reason we're going to talk about this issue, which is Messianic Jews, is because I got an email from a group that was asking me to interview their uh, their leader or their president, and the name of the book is called The Ultimate Destiny of Israel. So as soon as I got this, I forwarded it on to Michael Dallin to see what he had to say about it, and then we sort of arranged to have uh, a conversation with not only Michael, who we're waiting for his call, but from Nora, Norma Rellen, uh, Reynolds and also her husband Jerry, who live in Phoenix, and they are Noahites, but former Messianics, long associated with Messianic Jews. Norma, I know you're on the line. I'm still waiting for Michael, but let's get started. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself how you were affiliated with the Messianic Jews, and then, of course, came up, came to the Noahide group. Sure. Actually, we were Christians. Uh, we went to Christian church since birth, I guess you could say, and um, our uh, parents and grandparents and so forth were of the Baptist Protestant faith. And um, about 25 years into that, uh, we actually were affiliated with more of the charismatic movement or... Um, the more like the Assemblies of God Church, and but then we were uh, affiliated with a church in Jacksonville, Florida, that was uh, the host church for an event that was taking place in Orlando, Florida, in 1998. That was called the Israel's Jubilee Event, and there, during that year of preparation, we were um, introduced to the Messianic Jewish people. And as a matter of fact, they were heading up the entire program, and we worked closely with them for that year and met a lot of their synagogue leaders and um, pastors, or however you want to refer to them, and worked closely with them and um, really became friends with several of them. And after that was over with, we decided, hey, we need to find out why the Jews did not accept Jesus. And so that started our journey. It took about an eight-year journey of coming out of the church, finding out some of the truths that we had missed, I could say, and and, uh, looking for some of the truths that uh, would lead us on the path that we were supposed to follow. And just this past year, we met Michael with um, uh, First Covenant, and so here we are. Okay, well, Norma, thank you for sharing that. Michael, I'm glad you're on the line. Are you there? (coughs) Yeah, I am. Okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you this question: What is a messianic Jewish? Uh, what What are messianic Jews? I mean, Norma, you refer to them. I refer to them, but there are people out there who very easily would come along with that and then realize that it's not what they wanted. So, what is a messianic Jew? They're Christians with <laughs> with Jewish toys and Jewish attributes who uh, pray to uh, Jesus. They, they don't pray to Hashem. They, when it comes to the, the endlessly welcoming halls of um, the, the Torah's outpatient department, the, the Adamic covenant, the covenant with Adam and the covenant with Noah, uh, what Torah provides for all mankind, they ignore it, and they are Christians. They pray to Jesus. And they, you know, somewhere or other they think there's the Father in there, but as far as getting direct with Hashem, with, with the God of Israel, with the God of Moses, they're going another way. If you want the God of Moses, if you want the God of Israel, you're not going there with them. Okay, Michael, um, yeah. listen, we have to take a short break, but we're going to come back and spend at least another five minutes with you. So if you and Norma would wait patiently on the line, we'll be back with you in a few minutes. Is that okay? Pleasure. Great, okay.
Sunny so I'm really sorry, but now I have another extra five minutes for you, so I'm glad we can pick up the slack right here. Michael Dallin of First Covenant and uh, Norma Reynolds, who is part of the Noahite movement. Can you tell me, either one of you, how dangerous the Messianic Jew movement is to Jews? Well, it, it's just Christianity with Jewish trappings, Zelda. Uh, one of the problems is that this sort of, you were talking about God's warriors before, this yes, terrible, did. unbalanced show that was on CNN. You did this, watch it? Good. I'm glad somebody was watching. Uh, Jack Saunders was irate, uh, yes. uh, our, our, our partner, one of our principals. Uh, with Jimmy Carter on as fervent Christian, what you get is a repudiation of what the, 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 what the whole biblical plan, what all of Torah is all about. They were calling uh, what is the only possible path to peace in the Middle East as terrible extremism against God's will, against all that's holy and decent. And you'll find this same stuff in, in this Jewish, what, well, in, in, Messianic, Jewish messianism. I, Norma and Jerry can tell you more about this. But, okay, but, Norma, just tell us, did you reach a point where you knew you had to get out, even though you weren't Jewish, you thought you were following the wrong path? Oh, definitely, because uh, I would just like to address the fact of the danger of, of this, is the fact that people who are drawn in, Jewish people who are drawn in, to the Messianic movement, it, they are giving up their Jewishness because they are embracing the Christian God. The Christian church is the only foundation, uh, pulpit, you might say, that the Messianic movement has. They're a smaller group. They're growing, but they are a smaller group, and so their companion group is the Christian church, and that's their foundation from where they can have a larger platform to speak. But they're embracing the Christian God which is not the God of Israel. It's, uh, that was one thing that we learned. The Christian God that we served, we thought, was the same religion and the same God. It's just that we accepted Jesus as being the Messiah and God and that the Jews had missed it or were blinded or whatever. But once we began to come out of the church and we began to study and look at the God of Israel simply by studying Torah and then studying the very foundation as far as we could go back, of where the Christian church came from, we were astounded that we were actually serving a Greco-Roman God and not the God of Israel, and that they were serving a, a pagan situation. Or a, It was almost like when, uh, bless his heart, Aaron said, when the gold calf came out and he said, this is your God, well, all of a sudden, here's the Roman Catholic Church, which was the beginning of the actual church, was saying, okay, this is your God, Israel, and they were showing them this um, Gentilized Jesus. And mm. what they had done was stripped away all the Jewishness and made him into a God and made a huge religion out of it. You know, it's very frightening because when people are vulnerable and they really don't have much to hold on to and don't have any faith, anybody can walk in and bring them basically to their knees. So Exactly. So now what have you guys found from the Noahide? How has that brought you back into focus? Okay. Um, actually, we had, uh, like you said, we had been in the church and then we had um, been with the Messianics and when we realized the falsity of all that, um, we were just really kind of, you know, cut loose, uh, kind of like we were just floating where we had been members and involved and all this. All of a sudden, we didn't know what our uh, place was. We didn't know where to go and where to turn. And uh, we began to seek um, this God of Israel among his people. And for a few years, we're affiliated, not affiliated, but we uh, studied from two or three different rabbis and synagogues. But we never did really feel like that that was what we were to do, that we were to actually convert to Judaism. And we, they told us that we didn't have to do that. They were not encouraging us to do so. But uh, when we found uh, First Covenant, we realized that there is a place, that there is a universal uh, covenant for all mankind, and that that was really more where we fit in. This, that we were supposed to honor and recognize and serve, I guess you could say, 
uh, the creator God of Israel, but you did not have to do it as a Jew, and uh, you could be a Noahide. No, Norma Re- Rellin, Rellins, Re- I'm in, Reynolds. I too in Rellins, <laughs> Reynolds, sorry, too, so many people that we're talking to, Michael and, and Norma, I, you know, this is so important, I want to continue this on at another time, we can do another series of conversations, but what I'm thinking is maybe I can arrange after the holidays for an open line show, Michael, from where you are, maybe Norma, and, and your husband Jerry and, and uh, the Reverend and we can get it all together and bring our community into it as well. So I thank you so much for, for, for you know giving us this kind of information. Michael Dallin, I'll speak to you in a couple of weeks and we'll try to arrange something for all of us together, okay? Thank you all so right. much. Cheers, Alda. Thank Thanks. you both. Have a super day. Thank, thank you so you. much. Bye. Bye. The Rainbow Covenant with Dr. Michael Dallin has been made possible by First Covenant Foundation. Online, rainbowcovenant.org. First Covenant at this time, explore interior design today.